Greetings and welcome to the lesson. The subject is boardroom dynamics. We continue with the chapter on uh, board evaluation. In our last session, we defined board evaluation. We highlighted reasons why board evaluation is important and is obvious, candidates, as it is important to evaluate yourself as a candidate. There are times when you may need to carry out self-assessment through revision or working out past paper questions. You do that so that you can evaluate yourself and see if you are understanding or you are meeting the learning objectives. Likewise, a board we know is set up and the board has specific functions to perform. That's why it's very important that on periodic basis, the board carries out assessment, board evaluation, evaluation. And that evaluation can either be done by the board itself or by an external party. In our today's session, we are going to uh, study the various options of board evaluation. We are going to study uh, various options of board evaluation. And candidates, it's important to note, and I want you to write down, that uh, one is the evaluation of the board as a whole, evaluation of the board as a whole, one, evaluation of the board as a whole, that means the evaluation of the whole board. We may also have evaluation of board committees, evaluation of board committees like the uh, nomination committee, the risk management committee, the audit uh, committee, and so on. The third is evaluation of individual directors. Evaluation of individual directors. Evaluation of individual directors. And when carrying out evaluation of individual directors, the managing director may be evaluated. Whole time directors can be, uh, uh, can be evaluated. Independent directors can be evaluated. Non-executive directors can be evaluated. Evaluation can also be done of the uh, board chairman. Board chairman can also be evaluated. The board chairman can also be evaluated. Evaluation of the chairperson. Evaluation of the chairperson. So in our today's lesson, candidates, we are going to study uh, the evaluation of all these persons, starting with the evaluation of the board as a whole. So allow me to wrap this. Evaluation of the whole board. Now, candidates, the performance of the board as a whole may be evaluated either from reviews or feedbacks of the directors themselves or by some external source. And the independent directors at their separate meeting can also assess the quality, the quantity, and the timeliness of flow of information between the company management and uh, the board that is necessary for the board to effectively and reasonably perform their duties. So the evaluation of the performance of boards is essential, is an essential assessment. The evaluation 
of the performance of boards is essentially an assessment of how the board has performed on various parameters. So when carrying out assessment of the board, then these are some of the areas that uh, needs to be evaluated, what we are now calling parameters. Because when we are measuring or assessing the board, we, um, assess, we assess or assessment is done of the performance of the board. Evaluation is on the performance of the board. Because in, at the beginning I said, boards are set up for purposes of performing certain duties. They have certain responsibilities. There is certain work that has to be done. So if evaluation of the board has to be done, that has to be against that performance is measured against what is required of the board. So what are the parameters? What are the parameters that will determine the effectiveness of boards? The first one is structure of the board. the structure of the board. When looking at the structure of the board, we consider the composition of the board, the constitution of the board, and also the diversity of the board, including that of committees. When checking the structure of the board, we also look at the competencies and experience of the members. You consider the transparent appointment processes. There also may be need to look at the procedures, uh, frequency of meetings, uh, committee charters, and so on. Because it's the role of the board to ensure that um, the members are competent the members of the board that are uh, uh, recruited on the board have the required expertise, experience. The appointment process, when evaluating uh, the appointment process, is it a transparent process? So evaluation, when you're looking at the structure, those are things that are evaluated. Those are the parameters. When looking at the structure of the board, there are certain things that are considered when evaluating the composition of the board. Does the board adhere to diversity policy of the company? When looking at diversity of the company, does it have the correct mix? Because diversity is just a heterogeneous composition of the board. Does it follow the policy that has been put in place in order to have a diverse or a mix of um, uh, competencies, skills, gender, nationalities, culture, religion, and so on. Are all those been factored into the composition of the board? Those are areas you check when uh, measuring the performance of the board as far as the structure of the board is concerned. The second parameter is dynamics. The board dynamics. When studying the board dynamics, you also look at the functioning of the board. And functioning of the board. When evaluating the whole board, you look at the dynamics of the board, the functioning of the board. You may also need to consider the annual board calendar. You will check, uh, you evaluate based on information availability. You also check when you're talking of dynamics, we are, uh, this means the interactions and uh, communication with the CEO and senior executives. You consider the board agenda, you consider the cohesiveness and the quality of participation in board meetings and so on. So those are dynamics of the board and functioning of the board. Is there proper flow of information from the CEO and the uh, senior executives to the board? 
How about the board agenda? Is the board as a whole cohesive? How do members of the board relate? So when you are carrying out board evaluation, those are some of the parameters to consider. The third point here is the business strategy governance. Business strategy governance. Business strategy governance. Now, when evaluating the board on the basis of the business strategy uh, governance, you look at the board's role in company strategy. What is the board's role in company strategy? The next parameter is financial reporting process, internal, it is also internal controls, as well as the internal audit. Now, when carrying out evaluation of the board, another parameter to check is the financial reporting process, internal controls, and internal audit. Now, here, what should be evaluated is the integrity and the robustness of the financials, including other controls regarding the uh, uh, abusive related party uh, transactions, risk management, and so on. So financial reporting processes, internal controls, internal audit is uh, number four, the third parameter. Then parameter number five is monitoring role. Candidates, by now you know that one of the key roles that a, a board performs is monitoring role. The board has a mandate to monitor policies of the company, to monitor uh, strategy implementation, to monitor the systems of the company, and so on. So when evaluating the performance of the board, you need to check during this financial year, did the board perform its role of monitoring uh, policies, strategy implementation, and systems? All right. Another role that the board performs is the advisory role. Supporting and advisory role. Supporting and advisory role. The board as a whole performs a supporting and advisory role. So you need to check during this period when you're doing the evaluation, did the board adequately perform its advisory role? Related to advisory role here is FG, chairman's role. In, in carrying out its mandate as a board, a board is headed by a chairman. When evaluating the performance of the board, chairman's role has also to be evaluated in relation to the performance of the duties of a board as a whole. So these are parameters as far as evaluation of the board as a whole is concerned. Remember I say that uh, there are various options of board evaluation. The first option is evaluation of the board as a whole. And here are the parameters. Let us now move to the second option. This is number two. The, uh, number two we say it is the evaluation of board committees. Evaluation of committees. Evaluation of committees. In discharge of its roles, the board may set up certain committees. 
like the risk management committee, nomination co committee, compensation committee, the audit committee, and so on. And the board as a whole is responsible for the evaluation of the performance of its committees. And that evaluation, the performance of the committee's candidates may be evaluated by the directors, and that will be on the basis of certain terms of reference of the committee being evaluated. So sometimes the committees can be evaluated by the directors. And when carrying out such evaluation, then um, attention must be made to the terms of uh, reference of the committees that are being evaluated. The committees also may be evaluated by external persons. All right? The evaluation can be externally facilitated. So what are the, the, the parameters? What are the broad parameters of reviewing the performance of the board committees? Parameters. Now, when evaluating the performance of board committees, it's important to consider the discharge of the functions and the duties of the committee. Because a committee is put in place to discharge certain functions discharge of functions of the committee. For example, if it is a, an audit committee of the board, if it's an audit committee, then an audit committee is set up to perform certain functions and duties to perform certain functions and duties as per its terms of reference, all right? As per its terms of reference. Every committee has its terms of reference. There are specific functions, specific duties that a board committee is required to perform. Now, when evaluating the performance of the committee, then the evaluator will check the performance of the uh, committee vis-a-vis -vis what is expected to be performed by, by the committee as per its terms of reference. The second parameter is just the procedures and processes that are followed. Procedures and processes followed in discharge of its functions. When discharging committee functions, the committee members are required to adhere to certain procedures and processes. So when evaluating the performance of a board committee, then it's important to evaluate, to assess whether the board committee members adhered to the processes and procedures that they are uh, expected to follow when discharging functions. The third parameter the third parameter, let me be systematic in my numbering. The third parameter C is effectiveness of suggestions and recommendations received. Effectiveness of suggestions and 
recommendations received. In the process of performing its functions, the committees are expected to receive certain suggestions and recommendations. So when evaluating the committees, it's important to check the effectiveness of such suggestions and recommendations. Another important parameter is the size, the size of the committee, as well as the structure, the size, the structure of the committee, including the expertise. When evaluating uh, board committees, it's important to check the size of the committee. Is the committee as per the required, the, the number, is the number of members who sit on the committee the required number, all right? How about the structure? Is this structured according to the book? Do the committee members have the required expertise and skills to perform the functions as per the uh, terms of reference? That's an important parameter to evaluate. Another important parameter, candidates, another important uh, parameter and an obvious one is the conduct of its meetings. Conduct of its meetings. Committees naturally are required to conduct its businesses or business through meetings. So when evaluating the work of committees, it's important to assess how the meetings were conducted and what the procedures followed. Okay? And procedures followed. Committees are required to perform its business by way of uh, conducting meetings, and these meetings are supposed to be carried out in a certain way. There is procedure for conducting meetings. Are the meetings conducted according to the procedures? Right? Procedures followed. So that is uh, the second option. The first option here, candidates, is evaluation of the board as a whole. The second option is evaluation of board committees. Then we move on to the third option, evaluation of individual directors. Evaluation of individual Director. So evaluation of uh, the board can be conducted on the individual directors other than just the committee or the board as a whole. The performance evaluation of, I had earlier mentioned individual directors could be the uh, managing director whole-time director or the executive director. So candidates, the, the performance evaluation of um, a managing director or the executive director or the company may be done by all the directors. Yeah, and just like the evaluation of committees, an external facilitator may also um, evaluate the performance of individual directors. So now the question is, what are the broad uh, parameters for reviewing the performance of managing directors and executive directors? Managing directors. MD and executive executive 
directors. What are the broad parameters? What are the broad parameters? Now, the first parameter is the achievement of financials or business targets. Achievement of financial stroke business targets. Achievement of financial stroke business uh, targets. And we know financial targets or business targets are prescribed by the board as prescribed by the board. Now candidates, when carrying out evaluation, we are measuring the actual performance vis-a-vis -vis the expected performance. The MD and the executive directors are expected to hit certain targets, what you are calling financial and business targets that are pre prescribed by the board. So annually, the board should evaluate or assess the actual performance of the MD and the executive directors vis-a-vis -vis the prescribed targets of the board. So the first parameter is achievement of financial targets or business targets that are prescribed by the board. A, B. The second important parameter is developing and managing executive business plans. Executive business plans. The MD and the executive director can also be evaluated on the basis of the executive business plans, how they've developed the plans and how they've managed the plans, including operational plans, risk management, financial affairs of the organization, and so on. So evaluation of the MD and the executive director should be on how they've managed the organization generally, including the business plans, the operational plans, risk management, financial affairs, and so on. Three, display of, uh, display of leadership. Display of leadership. Candidate, these are leaders. They have delegated authority from the board. The board delegates its authority to the MD and the executive directors. These are leaders. So when carrying out evaluation of their performance, it's important to check if they have displayed leadership qualities. All right? Leadership qualities. Have they displayed leadership qualities? And display of leadership qualities can be in relation to being able to correctly anticipate business trends, opportunities, and priorities affecting the company's prosperity and operations. Four, developing policies. 
it is the role of the managing director and the executive director to develop policies that can be executed in order to achieve the strategic goals of a company. So when evaluating their performance, the, the, the evaluator can check if the MD and the executive director has developed policies and strategic plans uh, that align with the vision and the mission of the company. All right? That's an important parameter. Then I can add another point there, candidates, another parameter. Now, when we are discussing the parameters to consider when evaluating the performance of the managing director and, and, uh, and the executive di director. Another parameter here is establishing or the establishment of an effective organizational structure. Organizational structure. It is the role of the managing director or the executive director to ensure that there is in place an organizational structure, to ensure that there is management focus on key functions that are necessary for an organization to align itself with the mission. How about managing relations? Managing relations with the board. Managing relations with the board. That's another uh, duty bestowed upon a managing director and also the executive directors. They are mandated to ensure that, they ma that, that uh, the relationship with the board is in place, that there is a management team. Um, they also have to, uh, the managing director should also check or manage relationship other than the board. There is also the managing team, management, team. The MD should also manage relations with the regulators. Okay, so when evaluating the performance of the MD, the evaluator can check if the MD has managed relations, managed well the relations with the board, with the management team, with the regulators, with the bankers, with the industry representatives, and other stakeholders. Another area, very important one, last one here, but uh, not the least, is in relation to ethics. Ethics, candidates, ethics. An MD or an executive director should be evaluated so that the evaluator can confirm or check if they have demonstrated high ethical standards. High ethical standards and integrity. High ethical standards and, 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 and integrity is very important. So these are the parameters candidates in regard to evaluation of individual directors. Let us move on to the third uh, area. This is number four. Evaluation of independent directors. Evaluation of independent directors. Now, candidates, the performance evaluation of independent directors should be done by the entire board of directors, excluding the director being evaluated. The independent director is part of the board. So when evaluating this independent director, then the board should evaluate such a director, except 
the director who is being evaluated. And candidates, on the basis of the report of performance evaluation, it shall also be determined whether to extend or continue the term of appointment of an independent director. And we are going to discuss here the parameters. But I need to note that, that in addition to the parameters that are laid down for directors, which to some extent are common for evaluation to both independent and the non-executive directors, an independent director shall also be evaluated on other parameters, which I want us to discuss here. A. The first parameter is maintenance of independence maintenance of independence. An independent director performs a critical role in the uh, execution of a board's mandate. And it's for that reason that independent directors are appointed. One of the key requirements of an independent director is independence. The independent director should have what we call independent thought or independent voice. It's the same thing. It's only that the, 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 the voice, because a voice is just um, uh, a thought, okay? A voice is just a thought. Because before you voice something, you must have thought about it. So when evaluating an independent director, you, the an evaluator will check if that director maintained independence and that there was no conflict of interest and no conflict of interest. Right? That's the first parameter. Is that clear, candidates? The second parameter is in relation to objectivity. Objectivity, exercise of objective independent judgment. Exercise of objective. independent judgment, exercise of objective independent uh, independent judgment, exercise of objective independent judgment, and such judgment should be in the best interest of the company. The independent director is required to exercise in the objective independent judgment, judgment without bias, judgment that is in the best interest of the company. When evaluating an independent director, a key parameter is to check during that period, did the independent director exercise objective judgment when performing his or her duties? All right. Then the third parameter, candidates, is in relation to the independent director's ability to contribute to and monitor what we call corporate governance practice. Ability to contribute. 
and monitor. When the meetings were being held, when board meetings were being held during the year, when carrying out evaluation candidates, you evaluate, did this independent director contribute? And this contribution is in regard to corporate governance practice. Did the independent director also monitor corporate uh, governance practices uh, in the company? All right. Corporate governance practice. Because candidate, that's why the independent director is on the board, is sitting on the board, is to contribute and also to monitor corporate governance practice. So you need to evaluate whether the uh, director exactly did that. Number four, adhere to ethical standards. All right? Did the independent director during that period adhere to the code of conduct adhere to the code of conduct for independent directors every Independent director is required to adhere to the code of conduct for independent directors. This is a document that is in place. So when carrying out evaluation of the performance of the independent director, you check the provisions of the code vis-a-vis -vis the conduct of the director. You measure, check, did this independent director adhere to the code of conduct? for independent directors. Is that clear, candidates? Yeah, it should be obvious. It's straightforward. This straightforward. There is a code of conduct which is in written down. So you have it, if you are the one evaluating, you have it on this side. Then you have the conduct, this is the conduct of this director. So you just evaluate, check, did he or she adhere to the code of conduct? That is how to evaluate independent directors. And we say that the performance of the, the, evalu the, the performance evaluation of independent directors should be done by the entire board, excluding that director who is being evaluated. And we also say that in, on the basis of the report of performance evaluation, after evaluating this uh, independent director based on these parameters, then that report of the evaluation process shall determine whether to extend the, or continue the term limit of, of the appointment of the independent director. So, Independent directors is just it's like marking their work. It's like marking their work. Check their performance. If they perform poorly, then such directors would not uh, uh, adhere, for example, to the code of conduct. If they do not contribute or monitor the corporate governance, if they do not exercise objective judgment, if they do not maintain independence thought, then they should be dismissed. But if the independent director's report is positive, then the term of appointment can be extended. So that is evaluation of independent directors. But we also have number five. Number five is evaluation of the non-executive directors. Evaluation of non-executive non 
directors. How are they evaluated? Evaluation of non-executive directors. Now, who are these non-executive directors? Now, candidates, in terms of the code, sometimes uh, boards have to uh, make reference to the code for independent directors. Now, the independent directors on the board of a company should be evaluated I'm talking about the evaluation of non-executive directors. And I'm saying that the independent directors, okay? The independent directors, the performance of the independent directors, the ones we've mentioned here, we say that ought to be done by the board at the exclusion of the director who is being evaluated. But the independent directors on the board of a company should evaluate the performance of non-independent directors. I want to get you to get it clearly. In all these other, in other options, the other options that we've been discussing, evaluation of the Directors is done by the board as a whole, except this one where to the board as a whole at the exclusion of the director who is being evaluated. But when it comes to evaluation of the non-executive directors, I'm saying that the evaluation of the non-executive directors should be conducted by the independent directors. the independent directors should conduct evaluation of the non-executive directors. There could be also what we call peer review method or external evaluation, which can be used to facilitate the purpose of evaluating the non-executive directors. So what are the broad parameters? broad parameters. Broad parameters when it comes to evaluation of the non-executive directors. Number one, candidates. Number one, the first broad parameter candidates is the participation of the, at the board, participation at the board participation at the board. Participation at the board. And if the non-executive director sits on a committee, then participation at the committee. when measuring or evaluating the performance of a non-executive director, you need to look at participation. Did the non-executive director make any contribution or participate in the meetings? Or he did not participation at the board meetings or committee meetings? The second parameter, number two, commitment. Commitment, commitment. Commitment, commitment. Including guidance provided to senior managers.
because candidates, when a non-executive director is hired, part of the responsibility or duties is to provide guidance to the senior management. So when checking the performance of the non-executive director, it's important to check if during that period, the director guided or provided guidance to senior managers outside the board. His contribution is required at the board, but as well as outside the board. Or even committee meetings. Did the non-executive director provide guidance to committees? This is B. This should be A. We are moving on to C. Deployment. Deployment of knowledge. Deployment of knowledge. When evaluating non executive directors, it's important to check if they deployed knowledge. Because non executive directors, these are people who should deploy knowledge. Let me add and expertise. What kind of knowledge did the non executive director deploy during that period? Is there any evidence that uh, the company has benefited from his or her expertise? So when evaluating, you need to check if there was any deployment of knowledge or expertise. Four, effective management of relationships, management of relationships, effective management of relationships with the stakeholders. Five, integrity. It's important also to measure the integrity of the non-executive director. Integrity, as well as things like uh, confidentiality, maintenance of confidentiality. Were there any cases reported where the non-executive director failed to maintain confidentiality. Independence of behavior. Independence of behavior. Is expected to be independent in his behavior as well as his judgment. So these are the parameters when it comes to the evaluation of the performance of non-executive director. Let's move on to the last option of board evaluation. This number six, evaluation of the chair. chairperson to the board. Evaluation of chairperson of the board. Now, candidates, the performance of the chairperson is linked to both, one, the functioning of the board as a whole, as well as the performance of each director. So if you are to evaluate the performance of a chairperson of the board, then we need to consider, one, the functioning of the board as a whole. Why? Because the chair is the head of the board. He is the one who steers the board. Number two, 
We also check the functioning of each director because it is the role of the chair to ensure that each director performs his or her functions effectively to the board. And the code of independent directors, the code for independent directors provides that the independent director should review the performance of the chairperson of the company, taking into account the views of the executive directors and non-executive directors. So there again is a deviation from what we've been talking about. The performance of the chairperson to the board is assessed not by the board as a whole, but by the independent directors and the non-executive directors. All right? It is, I repeat, the evaluation of the chairperson to the board. And this is in accordance to the Code of Independent Directors. The code provides that the independent director is the one who ought to review the independent director. So the independent director, the independent director, independent director should do what? Should review the performance of the chairperson, taking into account the views of the executive directors and non-executive directors. So the evaluation of the chairperson to the board is done by the independent directors. And while at it, the independent director, while evaluating the work of the chairperson, can take into account the views of the executive director and the non-executive directors. So do you understand, candidates? Now, I can say, therefore, candidates, therefore, having said that, all the directors of the board of the company, all the directors of the board of the company, contribute in evaluating the performance of the chairperson of the board. In other words, the chair is evaluated by all the directors of the board. However, it should be noted that the one who leads that evaluation is the independent director. The independent director is the one to lead the evaluation process. And in carrying out evaluation, he can take into account the views of these other directors, the executive directors and the non-executive directors. But also, just like these other evaluations, external agencies can also uh, be involved in evaluating the chairperson. So let's discuss the parameters. The parameters. The parameters. Now, the broad parameters for reviewing the performance of the chairperson of the board include uh, include one managing relations. Managing relations. Remember the chairperson of the board is the leader. He manages a team. So when evaluating his performance, it's important to check whether he or she manage relationships well or not. So managing relationships with the members of the board as well as the management is a parameter to 
consider when evaluating the chairperson of the board. The second parameter is demonstration of leadership qualities. Demonstration of leadership qualities. A chairperson of the board is required to demonstrate certain leadership qualities, certain leadership qualities, and should also be able to steer committees. And candidates, you cannot steer committees if you are not, uh, if you do not uh, possess certain leadership qualities. Another parameter is that one to do with the internal workings of the board. I mean, the relationships and communications within the board. Relationships and communications within the board relationships and communications within the board, within the board, what we are calling dynamics. Boardroom what? Boardroom dynamics. We can also check if the chair provided ease, provided ease to the members in raising issues. You can also measure or evaluate if the chair provided ease of raising issues. Providing ease of raising issues. How do the board members relate with the chair? Is the chair a kind of a person who provides a conducive environment for the members to raise issues as well as concerns, could be complaints. Do the board members feel it comfortable to complain, to raise issues, to raise concerns? That should be evaluated. Another area to evaluate is in relation to promoting constructive debate. Is the chair a kind of a person who promotes constructive debates? Or is a person who stifles constructive debates? Constructive debates as well as effective decision making at the board. Is he a kind of a person who promotes effective decision making at the board? That can be done if this evaluation is done by an independent director. Then another parameter, we are discussing broad parameters. Number six is the relationship and effectiveness of communication, relationship and effectiveness of communication with stakeholders. Here we discussed the relationship and communication with the board. But the chair is also expected to build uh, constructive relationships and effective relationships and communication with the stakeholders, the owners, the, uh, the, the, the general public, the government, and so on. So when evaluating, it's important to check if um, that was done during that period. How about promotion of 
promotion of stakeholder confidence. It is the role of the chair to promote confidence in the stakeholders. All right? Promotion of stakeholder confidence. And this confidence could be the confidence that these stakeholders should have in the board. Are the, con are the stakeholders confident with the kind of board that has been put in place to steer the company to uh, achieve its strategic objectives? It is the role of the chair to do that. And when evaluating his performance, it's important to check if the head or the chair promoted stakeholder confidence in the board. Then personal attributes can also be measured. D-E-F-G-H, personal attributes. Personal attributes, things like uh, honesty. Is the chair an honest person? Is the chair a man of in or woman of integrity? Is the chair knowledgeable? So, candidate, these are some of the parameters that can be considered when uh, measuring the performance of the chairperson of the board. All right? Evaluation of chairperson of the board. And that effectively brings the lesson to an end. And candidates, we began right here. This is where we began, just to do a quick recap. In today's lesson, we sought to discuss the various options of board evaluation. And I said that the board can carry out an evaluation of itself as a whole. Evaluation of the board as a whole. We also said that there can be evaluation of committee of the board the committees of the board, number two. Number three is evaluation of individual directors. And these individual directors, we categorize them. The MD is evaluated differently. We have the managing director and the executive directors, this category. Then there is uh, number four, evaluation of independent directors. These are executive directors and the MD. Then we have another option. This one is uh, evaluation of independent directors. Number six, we have, uh, this is for number five here, we have evaluation of non-executive directors. These are independent directors. Then there is a non executive directors. Remember here we have the executive directors, we have the non-executive directors. Then lastly, we said the performance of the chair of the board can also be evaluated. So in discussing each option, candidates, we pointed out who is to carry out the evaluation. The evaluation of the board as a whole, we said it can be evaluated by the whole board or by an external agency. Then we laid out the parameters. When evaluating the board, what are some of the areas to consider? Or what exactly are you evaluating? We listed the parameters. When it comes to evaluation of board committees, we did the same parameters. For example, board committees, you assess the discharge of functions and duties as per the terms of reference of each committee. We did parameters when evaluating individual directors or the MD and executive directors, the 
independent directors. We've discussed parameters for evaluation of the non-executive directors. Then lastly, we have discussed the parameters when evaluating the chair of the board. I want you to go through this lesson one more time. Write down the notes. I've given written brief notes. You can rewind the video and write detailed notes if you so wish. For example, when I gave here the parameter for managing relations or relationships. I written managing relationship, but that is not conclusive. What relations are these? I pointed out that these are relations with the members of the board and the management. When I mentioned this parameter of demonstration of leadership qualities, demonstration of leadership qualities, I also mentioned the qualities that are needed in steering the board. The third one is relationship and communication with the board members. So where I've written short notes, you can rewind the video and put down notes. Go through the video. Then uh, you can have today's assignment here. Assignment, let me put it here. Assignment. Discuss six options of board evaluation process. Six options of board evaluation process. Six options of board evaluation process. Board evaluation process. Processes uh, of um, evaluating the board. Options of board evaluation. These are options. The board can evaluate committees, the board can evaluate independent directors, the board can carry out uh, evaluation of executive directors and so on. So try and discuss. And while discussing, please indicate under each option who is to carry out the evaluation. Then under each option, explain the parameters. Thank you. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.